Ah, uh, I... Where am I? It's all right, son. Don't panic. It's over. Uh, I'm back? Where are the guests? I invited them to go up to their rooms. They're resting. Don't worry. Gregory? We won, Louis. It's over. He's dead? Definitively. Now the way is clear. At any rate, rejoice. Great things await us. What did you do to him? I devoured his soul. You... but... I didn't see you use the Holy Lance. Indeed not. I didn't need to. Can't you guess how I did it? The Lance of Longinus is just a vessel, Louis. It could have been any object that had the blood of Christ on it. The blood of an ancient, more precisely. But I didn't need the blood of an ancient. You see, I have been in dear Lord Mortimer's physical body for longer than my brother has been in Sir Gregory Holmes. Therefore, I am an ancient, Louis. B what happened in the ether? I surpassed him. What do you mean you surpassed him? I made sure he was poisoned by my blood before our little chat. Remember the cup of tea in the dining room? I wagered that Gregory simply wouldn't be able to let it get cold. Old habits do die hard. You put your blood in your tea? And he put the hangman's rope round his own neck. Ironic, isn't it? Unable to extract himself from his physical body, it didn't take much time for me to absorb him. In any case, what's done is done. I'm going to rest in the dining room. Join me there when you're ready. The time has come to end this little antisocial gathering. No doubt about it. This family is rotten to the marrow. I did right not to trust them. Right. All I have to do now is confront Mortimer. Now's the time to join Mortimer. I won't be able to go back after... Here we go. Louis, at last. You wanted to see me? Let's get it over with, shall we? I've grown tired of all this. But before we begin, I would like you to give me back the Holy Lance, please. Now that Gregory is gone, he won't be needing it anymore, and I prefer to put it back in its place. I no longer have it. Of course. Here you are, Father. Thank you. You wouldn't have been able to do much with it anyway, given it isn't the right one. You mean I got the wrong one? Now, don't blame yourself. There was a reason why I put it with all those copies. If you had been forced to use it, it would never have prevented one of us from changing bodies. This conference will have been one of the most eventful I've ever known. Oh. Just have to take your word for it. Before I get to why we're here, you must know that I've been watching you very closely over these past few days. I won't hide the fact that I was disappointed that you did not succeed in saving Jacques Peru. You handled that situation very badly. As for the door of my crypt, no one had ever found out how to open it before you. You committed a serious mistake, 
in proving unable to tell your sisters apart, causing the death of the most promising of the two. I remain proud of what you achieved for me by falsifying that letter to the Pope on behalf of Piaggi, because I know that was not an easy task. Anyway, now it's time to put an end to things, once and for all, Louis. The poison that runs through your veins has definitively deprived you of the hopes I had placed in you, through your own faults. Don't you worry about it, Father. I'm a demon, and I'm your son. I'll make it through. I don't think so. I'll be honest with you, Louis, though it pains me. Your body is corrupted. The poison has been spreading inside you for too long. It has already caused irreparable damage. You are of no use to me now. I beg your pardon? You see, when the time comes for me to change bodies, I usually pass into the body of one of my children. The transition is much smoother and allows me to be operational much more quickly. Seeing the good work you had done since your arrival, I was convinced I had found my next body. It could only be you. But then you had to go and ruin everything. You dirty bastard! That's what you had planned for me all along, isn't it? I was never anything more than the envelope for your next life! Oh, please, do let us try and retain some dignity, shall we? Let's not fall prey to being pathetic. We're better than that. You bastard! Don't make this any harder than it already is, please. Harder? Listen, just be grateful that I'm granting you your freedom. Now I'll ask you to leave me and be gone within the hour. Moreover, if I were you, I wouldn't waste a single second in sterile conversation, because I'm not so sure that poison will even let you see the French coast again. You damned... I should have never listened to you! Rotten hell! As Mortimer had planned, Napoleon Bonaparte sold Louisiana to the United States after purchasing it from Spain. Bonaparte continued his political and military ascension until he proclaimed himself emperor. He went on to invade a large part of Central Europe. The legend of Napoleon persisted after his death, conferring on the emperor the role of Messiah for France. Remaining very popular, George Washington put an end to the various internal rebellions without violence and re-established trade agreements with Great Britain. Upon his death, he became a national hero and left an entire nation in a state of mourning. On his return to Spain, Manuel Godoy proceeded to give Louisiana up to France. Later on, he became the target of the Crown Prince of Spain, Ferdinand VII. The latter gave no respite to his mother's lover, going as far as condemning him to exile. He confiscated all of Manuel's titles and possessions, as well as those of his mistress, Pepita. Pursued, they ended up living out their last years in France in poverty and anonymity. The influence von Volner had over King Frederick William ironically ended up working against him. The sovereign thrust him into increasing repression until the end of his reign. Von Volner became the object of the people's hatred, was therefore stripped of his titles and land by the new king, and died in poverty to general indifference in the Prussian countryside. His eminence, having successfully accomplished his mission, returned to His Holiness the Pope with full honors. Although all his ambitions had become possible, to the stupefaction of his entourage, 
the Cardinal preferred to retire to his Tuscan monastery, far from all political and diplomatic entanglements. Fascinated by the techniques involved in exorcism and demonology, he dedicated the last years of his life to the study of Inquisition reports.